William Shakespeare wrote in one of his beautiful poems, a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. With all due respect to William Shakespeare, a name means something very specific. Certainly the name rose doesn't affect how it smells, but nevertheless, the name itself evokes so very many things in our mind and in our imagination, and certainly in our soul, particularly since the rose is associated with holiness, and above all, with Our Lady. Today, 25 of our young parishioners will be confirmed. They will accept the Catholic faith for themselves that their parents had accepted for them at their baptism. And I'm really very excited for this day for them. And they have chosen a new name. At their baptism, their parents gave them their name. And today, they'll choose a new name for themselves, and many of them have chosen the name of a saint, a saint whom they might follow and that they might emulate, a saint that they might become like. That new name will seal their desire to confirm their faith in the Catholic Church, to become their own agent in that faith. They will be responsible for living that faith and that, for growing that faith and for sharing that faith. And the new name that they take indicates something extraordinarily wonderful, that they want to become a new creation. Do you remember the name of your patron saint for confirmation? Mine, St. Francis of Assisi. I chose him because of a particular innocence and love of creation, but also because of a great joy and living the life of discipleship in Jesus Christ. St. Francis has become a close friend of mine throughout these many years that I've been confirmed, and I pray that he'll continue to grow a closer friend to me throughout the rest of my life, however long that will be, God only knows. But my dear friends of Christ, I beseech you please today, Please pray for these young persons of my new parish of St. Jude the Apostle Church in Lewis, Delaware, that they might grow more closely to the patron saint whose name they have selected to guide them throughout the rest of their lives as confirmed Catholics, that they might live faithful lives, faithful lives of discipleship and lives of faithfulness to God's law, his law of love and his law of joy. And then pray, too, that you might renew your own relationship and friendship with the patron saint whom you have chosen for your confirmation. That saint has been praying for you long before you ever thought to take her or his name for your confirmation. I know St. Francis was praying long for me, or I should say, for me long, long before I ever thought to take up him for my patron. And that's the great joy, my dear friends of Christ, of being one in the communion of saints, that saints who are in heaven long for us to be in heaven with them. Heaven, in many ways, can begin here and now, here, at the altar of the Lord. And by how seriously you and I receive the Eucharist, and by how seriously you and I live out the promises that we made at our confirmation. My dear friends of Christ, that reveals to the world how much you and I want to be a saint. And when we reveal that to the world, you and I, we make space for grace.